So recently I've been checking out this new amp sim from Mixwave and Taylor Larson. It's the new Jason Richardson amp sim and it's based off a PRS Archon, I do believe. So we can talk about that later though. I'm gonna see if I can make a song. I haven't written anything in a few days. So I will let you guys know how that goes. So in today's video, I want to talk about amp sims. So up until recently, I've been completely committed to using pretty much solely my Kemper for all of my guitar tones and all my writing and recording and stuff. But it's been feeling a little bit stale recently, so I decided to mess around with some more amp sims. You know, I've downloaded a few trials and I have a few amp sims that I own. However, I've kind of like realized there, there's just an inherent issue with amp sims and amp sim companies and the way people compare amp sims to one another. And I kind of want to talk about that quickly in today's video. It's not something that I see super often in like the hardware amp sims, but more so with companies like STL Tones and Neural DSP and just the way that we kind of use them and the way the community talks about them. And I think really maybe the best way for me to sum this up is to paraphrase a few comments that I've seen. The phrase kind of goes something like this. STL tone amp sims typically just sit better in the mix, but if you want to jam, the neural DSP amp sims are much better for that. And I think really at the core of that sentence, what they are really saying is that neural DSP, their amp sims are kind of more full frequency. You know, they're maybe more low end, more high end, and then maybe they just view it as a more accurate representation of an amplifier. Whereas some of the STL tones amp sims may uh, already be a little pre-mixed, maybe have some low meds cut, and it's maybe just meant to scent in the mix better. Now, I don't know if that is like the goal of either of those companies because I've never spoken with any of those companies, but also I'm kind of assuming that a lot of the people who are saying these things, they also have not spoken with the companies, and I think that is kind of the issue at hand here, is that we are comparing Neural DSP and STL Tones and all these other companies kind of apples to apples on a one-to-one -one ratio when we don't really know what their end goal is. To me, it would make more sense to compare all of STL Tones, all their amp pub amps and decide which ones you like the best out of that or to compare all of neural disc plugins and decide which amp sim you like best out of their plugins but to kind of compare them one to one uh, each company against one another i just really don't think that makes a ton of sense because of this non-issue that i'm speaking of and so what has really made me want to revisit this topic is the creation of the new jason richardson amp sim from mixwave mixwave is a studio and a plugin company owned by taylor larson and if you don't know who taylor larson is he is a pretty esteemed producer and mixing engineer. Um, he works in lots of different genres, but he is pretty well known in the metal genre for mixing just a lot of really big name bands. And if you follow Taylor on Instagram, then maybe you know that he has been pretty outspoken on critiquing different amp sims and like the Kemper and some of the Neural DSP stuff and kind of really talking about kind of how he views their top end as kind of fizzy, I believe is the word that he uses pretty often and how he kind of has a hard time fitting those guitar tones into, into his mixes because of the fizzy top end. So coming full circle back to his plugin, I think that the fizzy top end is something that he has definitely tackled in this new Jason Richards Richardson plug-in, but also not only has he kind of tackled the fizzy top end, I think he's also bridging the gap between the two major plug-in companies I was talking about earlier, STL Tones and Neural DSP. Um, I think it would be cool for us to maybe hop into Logic and let me explain what I'm talking about. Okay, so here I am in Logic. We're going to open up Mixwave's Jason Richardson. <clears throat> I can't say Jason Richardson today for some reason. I keep saying Jason Richardson. Okay, so I'm in Logic. We're going to open up Mixwave's Jason Richardson amp sim plug-in and take a look at the feature I'm talking about that I think has 
One, fix the fizzy high end that Taylor Larson has spoken about on Instagram, but two, is kind of bridging the gap between a lot of different amp sims. And I really think this is a feature that a lot more amp sims should include in their plugins. Okay, so this is the amp sim. I do believe that it is modeled after a PRS Archon of some sort. I think that is one of Taylor's favorite amp sims. The riff that I'm going to take a look at is kind of like an excerpt from the riff I played earlier in the video. If I decided to include that, we shall see. <laughs> Yeah, so just, you know, some chords and a little bit of riffage and stuff. But let's take a listen at that same thing after I disable this focus mode on the cab section. Yeah, so you can obviously tell that that focus mode is just taking some of that really high, some like the really high mids and some of the really fizzy like high end. And it's kind of just taming that. I don't really know what Taylor is doing behind the scenes with that just one button, but it kind of to me sounds like someone's just kind of throwing soothe on the end of a guitar chain and just kind of letting it clean up the, uh, the kind of nasty high end. I want to take a uh, FabFilter Pro Q3 and throw it at the end of this and kind of take a look at the frequency right up here and kind of the change that you'll see. So we're going to do with the focus up mode on first, and then we will disable that just in a second. There is like significantly less um, frequency information there in my opinion. Yes, especially around like this 1 to 2K range, like there's just like some really crazy nodes that are showing up right there that kind of almost disappear when you throw in the cab focus mode. So that's a really cool feature that I want to just take a really quick look at in the new Mixwave Jason Richardson plugin. So I hope that kind of explains what I was saying whenever I think Taylor Larson is kind of taking one step towards kind of bridging the gap between people who are just wanting to use amp sims to kind of quickly get ideas across or maybe they want it to sound good pretty much right out of the box so they can maybe send ideas and demos to some of their friends versus people who are using amp sims as their primary guitar tone source whenever they want to work on their mixing and their producing and they are legitimately trying to do this to like maybe make money or they just want to be really good at mixing and producing. I think kind of giving someone the option to have either or in one amp sim is actually really cool and I don't know why other companies haven't done something more similar to that yet. In my opinion, if the market can move more towards like there being multiple options for everybody kind of condensed down into one plugin though, I think that is kind of the right foot forward in the whole amp sim thing. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please do hit that like button as well as the subscribe button if you want to see more guitar content from me on my channel and hopefully I will see you guys in the next video.